The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. You're feeling good, Lewis. We're going to change the format just a tiny bit today and do the DAX and the FTSE after I get through with this segment because it's rather timely. I posted something that was done on May the 13th. As you'll see, the, they were 95% sure that the uh, market was going to uh, – no charts yet. Uh, I posted something already, but it wasn't a chart. Just a second. Let's get it up here again just to make sure. It came from uh, Reuters, I believe. Just give me a second here. just basically shows uh, what was happening on May the 13th when the deal was 90% done. And as you can see, guess what? Here we are today, and it's 90% done still. So what they say and what they do are two different things. The market had a huge rally. Uh, it was setting at major support. I wanted to send you this really beautiful chart on the Dow Jones futures. Uh, it's a 15-minute chart, but it was uh, sent to me by our good friend over in the UK. You'll notice that it was setting right at that support line, as you can see that with that wedge. And you can see the line went up and went right up to the retracement level when it broke through before, rallied well over 130 points in the Dow futures, stayed there, and then backed off. So this was basically basically a three ABCD patterns. But what's interesting here is you see there are different levels. And those levels are related to those harmonic numbers that we look like that we look at. And the numbers in the in the Dow Jones are usually 70 and 140 points, but not always, because when the market volatility increase, those numbers will increase by a factor of uh, 1.27 or 1.618, but that's neither here nor there. Now, the next one we want to look at, of course, is our good friend over in uh, Germany, and that's the German DAX. As you can see here, we did make a nice ABCD uh, pattern on the bottom there, a double ABCD at 12,170. We've only rallied about 20-some pips. Going below those lows, folks, is really negative. So I don't know if that will happen or not. But in the wind, there's a possibility that these trade things will be all taken care of and we'll be living in Camelot one more time. Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know. Now, we want to look at the FTSE because it's doing uh, the exact opposite, more or less. As you can see here in the FTSE, it's had a pretty good rally today. And uh, it's up into the area of the 78% level with a little bit of an ABCD. So we'll keep an eye on those. They, they have short-term downtrends, but again, it's a short-term downtrend. Nothing more, nothing less. I would like to comment just a little bit more about the open interest. I will bring that chart up again. Uh, to let you folks uh, uh, see what happened uh, yesterday in the open interest. This is the uh, Treasury notes again. Uh, if you'll notice here uh, on the first one, the 10-year Treasury note with an open interest of 3.7 million, this is the, second, the largest of all the commodities. And you'll notice open interest dropped with prices going up. That's, that's not a good sign, folks. If you go down to the two-year note, which is the shorter one, at 3.6 million open interest, uh, it was uh, open interest dropped even more, 15,000. Those are not good figures, folks. You got to get players to come into the market like we've had in the gold market to, to come in to, to get this thing. Now, if we get above, uh, you know, if we say we break out really big to the upside, then yeah, that's going to happen. But it's got to do it. It's got to do it with players, and the players are not coming in, folks. The CME is based on uh, a buy sell. It's an auction market. For every buyer, there's got to be a seller, and when the buyers don't show up, there's only sellers. And so <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen, but that's what's always happened in the past. But maybe it's different this time. You know what the heck I. I always wonder about that as I look at some of these things, so pay close attention. Now, yesterday, well, we've had a pretty big swings in gold here, folks. It's really neat watching the gold go up and down. We've had a um, 
We had a high. Guess what? We broke down to exactly thirty-four dollars, I believe, uh, to the uh, which was the harmonic number in gold. We got down to fourteen oh five. We immediately rallied thirteen dollar or twelve dollars from that level. There should be some pretty good resistance at fourteen nineteen now in gold if it's going to have a correction. Remember, we haven't had a correction here for well over several weeks. We've had one in silver and, of course, in platinum, but but not so much in the gold. So keep an eye on that gold today. The key price for me is 14 19 14 20 If we get above that, you know, after a $34 correction, you know, this thing could go anywhere. The open interest is still building in the, in the gold. Um, not as much as the last couple of days, but it's still building, whereas exact opposite is occurring in notes and bonds. Whether that means very much or not, I don't know. Now, a big thing going on, of course, is uh, Facebook and the cryptocurrencies. You can see what's happening now, that we have some validity for cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has now almost reached the 61% retracement at 13500 It could be there today. Hell, it could be there now. I don't know. But uh, you've got a big move there. And that would get you up to uh, the 61% retracement. This, we've said all along that this was not a bubble uh, because of the fact that if you look at Bitcoin from the 2018 to 2019, folks, that was an 80 more than just a little bit more than 80% correction in Bitcoin, folks. That's the fourth time since Bitcoin started uh, trading that it's done those 80% corrections. By the way, we're going to have Sim only on the um, on the on the uh, show at the half hour break. Uh, Ruby's asking when you said prices get, get up there. Uh, no, I, no, Ruby, it says when prices go up there, there are more buyers and sellers. No, no. When you have open interest, you have to have for every buyer, you must have a seller. Okay. Now, if you don't have a seller, the buyers have to come in and cover their shorts, and that makes open interest drop. If there's a buyer and a seller, open interest will go up. But that's that's what's happening. So it does apply. It's it's an auction market. You know, you it, it's that's what auction markets are for. So that's what I see. You know, history says that that's what usually happens. Now, this could go on for weeks, months, I don't know. But the fact that we're up here in this really strong resistance area of 61% on the long-term weekly chart, I don't know. By the way, Ruby, congratulations on the coffee. We, we, uh, you smoked them on the coffee. Uh, I think it's uh, fabulous. You know, we got coffee up to, uh, I think, what, one eleven. I mean, it's just a tremendous move in coffee, Ruby. I hope you were able to uh, take advantage of that, but it was really a, a pretty good move here. So we'll watch that. We'll take a little break here, 877-927-6648. TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a caller from Henderson, Nevada, I believe. Is, uh, are you there, sir? Yeah, is it Nevada? <laughs> Paul, is it Nevada? Yeah, it is Nevada. Nevada. That's right. What, good. What can I do for you, my friend? Hey, I want. Uh, um, I heard you talking about. I wanted to call in and ask about the Bitcoin weekly chart. I know you said that it's getting close to the six one eight. Yes. Um, on the long term weekly, and you, you expressed that you don't think that this isn't a bubble. Would you expect this to get back to the highs at some point, or how do you? How would you anticipate this playing out from here? Uh, my friend, I really don't know much about cryptocurrencies, but I do know charts, and I, I, I talked about this a little earlier in the show. I posted it here at TFNN uh, to show you, you know, we had that high at almost 20,000, 19,500 back in January of 2018, and the market gave up 80% of its value. Paul, that's the, the, that was the fourth time that Bitcoin has done that over the last nine years. It's done this, uh, given 80% of its value back, and now it's coming back. If if we exceed those old highs, all you have to do is multiply that 19,000 uh, minus the 3,000, which is 16,000, add it to that top, and that takes you to 30,000 for Bitcoin. And you know who knows on these things because you know they, when they go, they 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 have to, so much of a of a following that it uh, who knows what it's going to do but it certainly doesn't look uh it's going to have a lot of trouble at 14,000 is if it's technically correct and so far it's been following the the fibonacci numbers really quite nicely so uh, all i know is it's not a bubble and w we didn't think it was a bubble when it was down there remember the abcd that we talked about here before came in at around 3800 it went to 3300 and then it stayed there for well over four or five months and then it finally started to moving up in March. But right now, I mean, it looks like it's got uh, 13,500 written all over it. The last I have is uh, 12,400. Yeah, it's at 12,700 right now. It really has the juice. I mean, it's the most explosive asset class um, ever by far. Yeah. And um, it's just amazing to watch it. I've been fortunate enough to participate in the market. And um, I'm looking to, to see what the experts are saying like yourself and where to you know really take some profit. <laughs> Whoa! Time out. I'm not an expert in this. I just look at the chart, my friend. I have. No, I don't in, even know in what. Terms I, of, yeah. In terms of the chart is what I mean. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Know yeah. Can, All right. That I understand. Hey, but the. Uh, hey, it's quick, like Larry. I was thinking about you. I was thinking about you this weekend because I've heard you tell several stories about the '87 crash, and I watched the documentary this weekend about the '87 crash. And it was giving me butterflies just watching the documentary, so I can only imagine uh, what it was like going through it and um, trading yeah. during that time. 
Yeah, Paul, I, I the most vivid memory I have was the spread. And remember, remember, we didn't have uh, E-minis at that time. We had the full contract size. So each time it moved a point, it was five hundred dollars, not fifty, not fifty dollars. And I had I had four shorts on that day, and uh, oh, nice. they were they were doing pretty good. But the bid and offers, you won't believe this, but it was trading around two seventy, and the the offer to sell was at two eighty, and the offer to buy would be at two fifty. There was Ten thousand dollar spread between buys and sells. That's how crazy wow. it was. Now it was uh, insane. And then, of course, the the plunge protection key team came in uh, on that night of uh, Monday night. And basically, what they did, many people don't understand what they really did, but they went into the banks and they said, "Look, we're going to mark all your positions to the market, not where you bought it." But to the market, in other words, if, if they had bought something sir, at 50 and it now was at 20, if they showed on their books, they would have a, you know, a 30 point loss on whatever millions of shares they had. But if they marketed it to the market, whatever it was, then they had buying power. And that basically opened the vaults and uh, that stopped the market from going down. And that was a low, uh, you know, for wow. it's still the low. <laughs> and that low was uh, 1666, I believe, in the Dow Jones which was an exact 61% retracement of the low from uh, August of 1982. So um, I remember it wow. very vividly. Yep. Hey, I have would to, you I have expect to... that you would have seen the Dow uh, way up here at close to 27,000 after that day? Oh, yes, that was my target. That day I had it at 27,000. If you believe that, <laughs> Paul, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm going to save one of them for you, okay? <laughs> yeah, save me that share, man. <laughs> hey, thanks for your time, man. Hey, have a yeah, good day. Yeah. Yeah, keep the faith and call in again if you get a chance. Yeah, those are the bye -bye. old days, folks, back at, you know, I have to tell you a funny story. Well, it's not a funny, 1616. Thank you very much, Steve. By golly, you keep me honest as can be. 1616 was the low of the Dow that day. And anyway, uh, I want to make a correction to uh, Mr. Winsky, who's going to be on here on Friday, was uh, telling me that um, the, I, I thought it was Dartmouth was the most expensive school. But, uh-oh, something's wrong. We've got a problem in River City. Broadsword to Danny Boy, broadsword to Danny Boy. Can anybody hear me? The chicken is in the pot. The chicken is in the pot. Uh-oh, what's wrong? Okay, all right. I don't know why I'm hearing. I'm, boy, I'm hearing all kind of static and people talking on the line. I don't know what the what the problem is. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll. I wanted to mention. Um, well, the statics on my end, uh, Al. But anyway, let's. Uh, I wanted to mention about that in 1987. Um, that day, I was. Uh, I had covered my short about two out when the Dow was down about 400 points, I believe. It ended up being down 550, but down 400 points. I had made a lot of money on those four shorts that I had on, and I was long six bond contracts, and bonds were down about a half a point. And I was actually afraid that we were not going to be able to get our money out of the, um, the commodity brokerage firm. I was going through um, – um, who was I going through? Lynn uh, – yeah, I was going through Lynn Waldock, and I couldn't get in touch with Barry because I know he was too busy, but it was it was hectic. And I was afraid that, you know, I wouldn't be able to get the money out. So I sold my my six bond contracts. Folks, that was the that was the dumbest trade I did for the whole year because uh, bonds went, I think they went 15 handles uh, straight up. I mean, it was just uh, it was just an amazing move. Now, here again, my memory might be slipping, but that's it. Anyway, uh, Dartmouth doesn't even come in the top 20. I, I've, uh, Norm sent me what the number one school was. Uh, it's some of those heavenly seven schools, but you know they're all fifty, sixty thousand dollars. You know, it's all ridiculous, whatever it is. Anyway, those were, were those are the things that we're sort of keeping an eye on uh, this morning here. Um, someone else asked a question about. Uh, oh dear. I can't remember what it was. Oh, uh, about the platinum, folks. I still think platinum's got a chance to get down to that uh, uh, 780. Uh, you know, it hasn't taken off here with the rest of it, and I, I really think it's got a chance to get there. If we just take a, you know, look. I mean, look, look what, look what's happened to gold. Gold has taken out the top of April and gone to a 1.618 expansion compared to platinum, which should be trading at 1,050. That's where it should be if it's running with gold, but it's not doing that. And silver's the same way. You know, silver couldn't even make a higher high with gold up $35 on Monday. That, that's, that's not a good sign. 
But the good sign is, is if you're in the gold, there's open interest coming in. The players are there, boys and girls. There's no question about it. They are playing, so uh, we've got to watch very, very closely uh, what's this. I don't know whether what we're watching now is a, uh, what we call uh, fake news or not, or what they're talking about, the difference in the uh, uh, this trade agreement and stuff, but we've heard that before, and we'll probably hear it again. That's uh, the bottom line. Oh, one, one thing, we've had, a, uh, we've had a trade on that's working nicely, nothing dramatic, but that's the, uh, the crude oil contract. It's held up relatively well. It went to the exact price. The high was uh, 14, uh, 114.10. We had an order to sell at 114.08. It's trading about five, six hundred dollars under that right now. So you keep your stop at break even and see if it's going to move down a little bit more because it has the possibility of doing that. So we'll keep a uh, very, very, very close eye on that. Um, see, someone saying that China tells Canada to stop meat supplies over bogus documents. I don't know what that means. That's reading the news, folks. I tell you, when you read the news, boy, you better have a strong stomach because, boy, I don't understand a lot of the things that that's out there. That's just... It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
I don't know whether we have Simonly on the line or not. Si, are you there? Evidently, there's he's tied up this morning, so we'll have to continue on. What I've done here, folks, is I've posted the chart for the Christmas corn, December corn. That's new crop corn. And as you can see uh, from the weather reports that are out there, that it's uh, you know pretty nasty as far as uh, the crop conditions. But, uh, you know, we topped here uh, way back on uh, a week ago, actually nine days ago, and we've been having a nice little correction here. The key level that I'm watching is the 382 retracement that comes in around 432. That's down 20 cents from where we are uh, right now. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be a good spot to uh, get in or not, but uh, that's what I'm watching. Let's keep a, let's keep a close eye on that one, but uh, that would be a 382 retracement. If you'll notice, uh, the low that we made, it, folks, this is, this is important from a, c several different standpoints. Uh, but if you'll notice the low on May the 13th, the market went from a four, a 365, rallied up to 452. Uh, then we backed off to 425. That 425 was right near that gap area at 420. Uh, that was uh, just a heartbeat off of the 382 retracement. Then from there, we rallied another 50 cents. Uh, and that took us up to 472. And that's why the importance of this 432 level uh, in the de December corn is really, really important. Um, I chat with Asai just about every day, and uh, he's been on the short side of beans here the last few days, and they've been going down a lot more than the corn because the, the fundamentals, uh, which I don't look at, but he does, are relatively bearish. So we'll see. Okay, let's see if we've got uh, somebody coming down the line here. So, are you there, my friend? Yes, sir. Hey, how are you doing? Listen, I, I know you're I'm really wonderful. busy, but I'm talking about the uh, December corn and the possible support at uh, 432. We're trading at 453. Do you see any possibility that we could get to 432? Oh, sure, Larry. Yeah, you've got nice weather coming. Uh, the market's, you know, <laughs> bullish short term on the real wet weather, but. Uh, you're going to get some heat units, so they're called GDUs, where the, the, the corn's going to have some opportunity to grow for the next 7 to 10 days. So, yeah, you could definitely get that 20-cent break. And we got a crop report that gives us acres, Larry, on Friday. So I don't see it going before that. But unless the USDA goes in the direction we all think it's going to go, which is less corn acres planted, I'm in that camp. Um, in fact, I think the market can be close to 7 to 10 million acres lost internally. We, we do polls, and we talk to a lot of farmers. So um, we think the, uh, the USDA will give us down 6, mm -hmm. right, down 6 million acres. So, yeah, um, you, you can definitely get that break, but that's, to your point, 432 is a buying opportunity. Okay, do you see do you see the possibility of corn, you know, running into those areas we've been at before, like 7 bucks and 8 bucks a bushel? Well, so think about it in probabilities, right? What's the probabilities you get to seven, eight, ten dollars? It's it's ten, it's less than ten percent. Um, mm -hmm. From a fundamental standpoint, I think five fifty corn is probably high enough under normal growing um, growing scenarios this year. Let's call it where you get a little rain, you get some heat. And that's what we're talking about the rest of the year. That's what we think is going to happen. Still stays wet, but you'll you'll normalize. Um, why only 550, five and a quarter, 550? That's kind of our blow off. That's a three drive to a top. And you got a lot of green in the world, Larry. You got a lot of green in the world. Unless we get real, real bad um, yields, and unless we have 10 million acres down, then you can go above 550. But that might take us a couple more months. So you got to be careful, right? That that first move up to five and a quarter on the three drive. That's that's where you sell it. Um, we have a question from one of our listeners, Cy, about the hogs. Uh, do you follow uh, what's going on with this uh, Chinese Asian flu or whatever it is? And is it <laughs> you is know, it real? <laughs> yeah, it's real, but it's the, the problem is, it, is it, it's kind of like um, a deliverable contract. It's real in China. It's just not real here. Right? We have a lot of hogs in our contracts based off of our deliverable contracts. So unless they just completely buy our carryout, it's hard, you know, down here, you're probably getting close, you know, close to 75 cents. You're getting close maybe to an area that you shouldn't be selling um, because in the next, let's call it year, there we might find more problems. So I just see more volatility coming in. If they buy our hogs, then yes, you get pretty interesting. 
but not it's yet. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing they have a 30 cent break per pound in the midst of something as supposedly as drastic as that. That makes you wonder about some of the news items that you get sometimes. <laughs> right, that's right. Uh, what's your What's your feeling on the soybeans, uh, Cy? Where Where do you Where do you think you've got value here? I'm sorry, say that again. You broke up the soy, the soy beans. What are you looking at for, uh, say, July um, and November beans? Well, you know, November beans are the one, Larry, we think we can that can break, and that's how corn can break uh, 20 cents. If corn's going to break 20 cents, that probably means beans are going to break more, 50, 60 cents. Mm -hmm. But you get November beans get back to 850. Uh, you got a lot of growing left, and you got to you got to prove this yield, and you might lose a couple million acres on beans as well. So. We're more bearish beans, okay? We're more bearish beans than corn. Um, so I think short term, that's the one I, that I think the USDA will probably raise the acres, not lower on this June 28th report. So beans are the ones that I think can kind of get beat up the most. Um, and then you get corn to 430, you buy it, you kind of get beans back into 850. That's probably low enough uh, mm -hmm. in front of the growing season. You're just going to have more okay. volatility. Sure. Now, the question that someone's asked is about the, you know, the, the crop that we start, you know, harvesting here in late September, early October. Given the fact that the crop is going in so late for corn and, and uh, beans are having trouble, too, what, what are the probabilities that we have a uh, early frost or, you know, even more rain in, in the fall? Is there any statistics behind that? Well, um weather, anything beyond two weeks is hard to predict, right? That's That's mm -hmm. my sort of stance on it. I will say a lot of the models are talking about more rain in, in a cooler summer. So what does that mean? Does that mean 90 degree days turn into 85 degree days? Um, does that mean one inch means two inches above normal? I don't know. Um, I would say right now the pattern is cool and wet. And until that pattern changes, I think you have a higher than normal probability that you, you do have a wet harvest and possibly a freeze. Now, my weather, and I read three or four weather guys, and we got people on staff that look at everything, and it's still, you know, at 60%, that's the best flip coin flip I'll take all day on a weather guy beyond two weeks. <laughs> Say, tell me about sugar. Has it got good value here at 1250? Yeah, I don't know, Larry. I've taken kind of sugar off the radar. Um, I just don't think there's a big story just yet. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of struggling what to do with sugar. You know, when I get fired up, you'll we'll, we'll talk about it. But it's mm -hmm. it's sugar every time I see something, Larry. It's kind of like wheat. Uh, it's just it's a crop that's meant to be sold. So I don't know. You need a real disaster. <laughs> that's for sure. Listen, I want to thank you for being on and be safe in your travels, my friend. I know you go back and forth across the country like more United Airline pilots. So just be safe yeah. when you travel out there, okay? All right, 10 4. Have a good day, Larry. You Thank bet. You. Thank you very much. Simon Only, folks, is Sylvius Financial. Yeah, certainly nice to have him on to talk to us about uh, you know, what's going on with some of these crops. And it's you know, quite exciting, of course. So we'll keep a close eye on this to see if. Uh, uh, what happens we've got a crop report coming in here this week folks on friday so we'll be watching it very very closely to keep an eye on what's going on we'll be right back 877-927-6648 David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. 
The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help Help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24/7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk. Sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24/7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to take a moment here to, to go over the, the open interest again because several people have already emailed me uh, that they don't under, understand it. Folks, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is an auction market. And when you're a member there, you go into the pit and you become a buyer or seller. They have little cards, little pla uh, little paper cards. I still have thousands of them. They don't use them anymore. But there was a buyer on one side, seller on the other side, and you matched up with another trader, whether it was a commercial or whatever, and he bought it, you sold it, and those trades maxed up, and that was the open interest increased by 1%. By one, by one contract. So there has to be a, an all equal offset. Now, as prices go higher, okay, and the open interest drops, it means that the shorts are coming in and covering their positions. The buyers are paying up, and then when they get out, the, the open interest drops. And when prices go up and open interest drops, that's usually negative. That's historically what that means. Uh, if you have any anything more about that, I think you'd go to John Murphy's book, uh, about technical analysis of the futures markets, and he would certainly uh, cover that under that section. But uh, the only time I follow the open interest is when markets are at uh, extremes, like we're seeing here uh, in the uh, Treasury notes and Treasury bonds, and what we're seeing, of course, in the Treasury um, uh, in, in the um, stock indices. And then there, that's also another one. Open interest is dropping in, and then also in the gold, where open interest is very, very strong. So those are the ones that I'm looking at. I think there's a tremendous amount of support in the gold at uh, 1,400, folks, 1,402. We got down to 1,405 last night, uh, rallied up about, uh, what, 10 bucks, and we're trading around 09 right now. But at 1,400, there's, uh, there's a lot of numbers. One of those is that 382 level, and that would be down $40 from the high. Remember, the harmonic number in gold is 34. We've already hit that once, so maybe the bottom is already in. But uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on, of course. So, uh, pay, you know, well, you know, when I do this show every day, I try to prepare what I think is going to be exciting and interesting for the day. But sometimes I, I don't get it done. So just bear with me sometimes when I don't quite get it done. The biggest problem that I see in the metals market is this one right here, and that is silver. And believe me, folks, silver means a great deal to me because of the fact that we are, uh, you know, in this area, uh, we're trading, I guess, what, 14, we're 15, 20 something, I guess, this morning, but it didn't go anywhere with, with gold breaking out. That's usually not a very good sign. Same thing, you know, with platinum. I will, I will mention this. Uh, we, we are going to have um, Rich Anderson on, on Friday. Uh, he'll be on, and we'll have him on 
uh, for a uh, nice talk about the crop report coming up. We have the Wizard Winsky coming up uh, on uh, the on Thursday, so we'll take a oh Thursday's interesting because that's Dr. Steve Shapiro's birthday. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to uh, talk just a tiny bit about this corn that we just posted a little while ago, folks. It's got a really good chance here because of this crop report coming in on Friday. I'd like to see it down today, tomorrow. And then ha I'm going to have an order setting in there, I believe, around that 1430 or 430 uh, to 433 level, maybe raise it a little bit. But that's what my plan is right now. I'm following the open interest in that, and it's still positive. So I still think it looks uh, looks pretty good. Thank you, Terry, for the compliment about the guest. Yeah, those guys are they're all very, very uh <laughs> they're all very, very, uh, uh, very well. They're not only that, but they're super nice guys, and especially Cy because he's uh, Cy hit the mother load last year at the end of the year, and he's uh, he he just got very, very fortunate after working in this business for a long time. He was the his first job I think I mentioned is was with with Rich Anderson, and he still says Rich was the most ruthless boss that he ever had, which I could certainly understand that knowing Rich for 50 years, but he was just a kid and now he's built up this huge business and uh, he sold his business uh, in January to uh, Farm Bureau and uh, they are uh, you know he's very very big I mean he's uh, he's they well they got a lot he's got 350 employees so he must be doing something right I guess uh, the uh, the euro folks uh, the euro is backed off quietly we're trading around 113.50 now we're down about 70 uh, cents from the high uh, that's about 800 bucks, and uh, you know, keep your stop at break even because if this China thing comes happens to whatever, whatever, you know, these things could literally go uh, wacko to the upside, and you don't want to stand in front of it. You got to lead in some of these things, so make sure you have your stops at break even on any of these things because, you know, who knows with the news the way it is, uh, either up or down. You've got to protect yourself because some of these things can really be nasty, and nasty is not good. You know, that takes a long time to get over those types of trades. So watch that. We're keeping a close eye on the crude oil. Uh, there should be a lot of resistance up here at around the 59.50 level in the crude. That's what uh, that's what I'm keeping an eye on right now. Well, we're, we're there right now, 59.50. So I'm keeping a close eye uh, on that uh, for uh, for today. So that's the main thing. Uh, the, the other markets that uh, I look at, I'm watching wheat because we've got that crop report's going to come in on Friday too. I'd like to be a buyer of wheat down about 15 or 20 cents and also a buyer of the soybeans down about 30 cents lower. So those are just a few of the ones that I'm, uh, you know, watching and, uh, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's the, that's the, that's the bottom line. You can't uh, can't ask for anything more than that. The Treasury bonds are trading at 155.17. We didn't make new highs again on this run, but no, nor did the uh, Treasury notes. The open interest came down in both of them, but the I, I, let's correct that, Larry. The open interest did not come down in the bonds. It was up very very slightly, but two-year notes and 10-year notes definitely had drops in open interest. That means shorts were covering. In order to get this market to go a lot higher, folks, the only way you're going to get that is if this puppy makes a heck of a move to the upside uh, with a lot of lot of new buyers coming in because it's not going to go anywhere if it doesn't have any buyers. Well, let's correct that, Larry. There could be that shorts have to cover all the way up. And that would really be interesting because we haven't seen that happen before. But with the Federal Reserve in there, who knows? You know, the person that would probably know more about that would be Shane uh, Wolf Trader, and we'll we'll have to ask him about that. He pretty pretty up uh, up up on those kind of things. But right now, that open interest is not bullish in notes and bonds. But it ain't going down, that's for sure. Let's take a break here. Pay a few bills. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I posted that Euro chart uh, to let you folks take a look at this ABCD pattern that's there that measured the 1410. Very, very quiet market. Had a nice ABCD move in between. And uh, the first profit objective comes in at uh, uh, 113.25. We're trading at 113.55. And whether that'll happen or not, we'll have to wait and see. But you want to have your stop at break even uh, in case uh, something crazy happens with uh, the Chinese tariffs, Iran, uh, whatever, whatever. So uh, remember, these markets can be very, very volatile. Some people can trade without stops, folks. I've seen that and my more power is to them but uh, they use money management and they they're aware of a disastrous stops and sometimes that does happen to them but uh, they're very very flexible and uh, it takes a real professional to do that because you have to have an absolute discipline you know to get out of the trade when you absolutely know you're wrong because if you don't you know disaster is just around the corner you can imagine some of the things that have happened well look at well let's like, don't want to go into the thing with Bitcoin because I don't know anybody that – I know three people who have been involved with that uh, over the years. But uh, some of them have done incredible – well, all of them have, but uh, they were in very, very early. I remember now, folks, that we're going to have Norm Winsky on tomorrow and uh, from uh, Astro Trends, and we'll have Rich Anderson from Anderson Capital Management on, on, uh, on Friday. So we'll watch those very closely. Regarding the hogs – 
Uh, so I mentioned that you know they're down in an area where they have some pretty good value in here. The problem that I have with the hogs here, folks, is I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that because I'm waiting for a pattern that would validate some place where I could uh, you know put a, a, a place to stop and not worry about you know what uh, what's going to happen. And so I don't really have that in hogs, so I, I can't trade them. You know, so uh, that's that's just the way I. The way I look at the markets, I, I don't know the fundamentals. I don't want to know the fundamentals. I, I just want to show me where the buyers and sellers are. And that's that's what I'm looking at. Same thing in the in the bonds. I've been nibbling the short side at these for, wow, quite a while. And yet, you know, I've never got hurt very bad, but I made a little money, lost a little money. I'm about even in the, the bond trades here over the last uh, two or three weeks. I think I did one trade. That, that took a small loss. Uh, I think it was around $400. And then uh, and the rest of them, you know, I entered a trade because sometimes it has some pretty good swings in there. But lately, you know, since uh, the last two days, we've been trading from 156 and 155. You know, there's not much action going there. And with open interest dropping, folks, that's not good. Well, that's the way I interpret it. And I, and I certainly could be wrong. That's uh, no question about that. Okay. Uh, I did want to mention one other thing about the U.S. dollar. We've uh, had, uh, you know, this market has held up relatively well, uh, given the fact that we were looking for that big ABCD that did complete. That's when the euro turned. And so keep an eye on that as we as we watch that, because uh, that's the main thing we're watching. Regarding the gold, I believe gold has a good pattern at $1,400 an ounce. I wouldn't risk more than $8. And believe me, it is rocking and rolling, folks. It's swinging last night. We must have seen gold swing $60 up and down. That's how much it was uh, jumping around. So it's not for the faint of heart, but the, the patterns are there. If you take some time and look at these patterns, you know, they'll give you, you know, they won't get you to the promised land, but they're not going to take you any place where it's bad. 877-927-6648. We'll see you on the flip-flop.